let's let's zoom in here. Let's just take a look. Oh, this looks amazing. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm finally doing a full face of e.l.f. Cosmetics. I've been planning this video for a while because I really wanted to take some time of the products. I don't want this to be a full face of first impressions. Some things are first impressions, but for like big products like the foundation and the eyeshadows, I really wanted to make sure I had a full opinion on those and that they had been tested thoroughly before this video. So before we jump into this full face, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like this full face series. And if you have it and you'd like to, I really hope you would consider subscribing so you're notified whenever I post a new video every single Monday through Friday and for the month of December, a video every single day. So first, I'm going to jump in with primer, and this is actually a primer that I haven't had a whole lot of experience with. Their regular line of primers, like their clear bottles that are like pink and blue and green, those are some really good primers, and I knew that I already liked those, and I would highly recommend those if you're on a budget, so I really wanted to go out and try something different. The only downside is I hate e.l.f. packaging labeling because there's nothing on this bottle right here that tells me what it is all it says on the bottom is clear transparent so i actually had to keep a lot of these in their boxes until right before like i filmed this video because otherwise i would have no idea what each one of these things are so i have the box for this because otherwise i don't know maybe i'll write it on sharp like in sharpie on the back i don't know but this is the beautifully bare three in one makeup base the beautifully bare line that they have is a very um like sheer kind of makeup line and i haven't tried a whole lot from it so i really wanted to try out this primer so let's see so it's very white it's not exactly a transparent but let's rub this in it feels like a nice moisturizer Ooh, that is scented. Oh, I can't quite pin it. It smells so familiar, though. It smells like sunscreen and Legos. Yeah, oh, that's weird. So it doesn't really do anything for like pores or fine lines, which I don't really think it claims to do that. But my skin does feel really moisturized and I do have more of like a glow. For the foundation, I'll be going into the foundation I've been testing for a while that has really impressed me, and this is the Acne Fighting Foundation. Again, nothing on this bottle says acne fighting. I had to just, like, remember what foundation it was, and that's really gonna get me, especially if I'm trying to recommend products that are good. How can I recommend it if I don't know, like, what it's called? I can't say, like, oh, go pick this up if I can't tell you what it is. But anyway, this is the Acne Fighting Foundation. I actually have the lightest shade, which is porcelain. This is too dark for me. The lightest shade of this foundation is too dark for me. And for reference, I'm currently like an NC25. I've never been the lightest shade in a foundation before, and I have never had the lightest shade be too dark. So that was very shocking. But more shocking was just how well this foundation wears and performs. It's... I keep comparing everything now to the Catrice HD coverage because I love that. I would say it's like right below the Catrice. This one like isn't as full coverage, but it's still like a, a solid medium coverage. And I think the only thing that puts this below the, the Catrice is that it does sink into lines a little bit more. And you can kind of see it breaking down after about like eight hours. Whereas the Catrice, I could wear that like forever and it looks great. So back to the acne fighting foundation. I'm just mixing that with a pump of my white mixer. I think elf has a white mixer. I should have picked that up. Oops, I just stuck with my regular LA Girl white mixer, but I think they actually did come out with a line of foundation mixers. But since I already had one and white mixer is something that you're really not going to go through that quickly. So even if you're using it every day, you're only using a little bit in relation to the foundation, right? So so that was, that's an oops on me. <laughs> so I like to apply this with a sponge. I feel like the sponge is the best way for this to look on my skin. I would definitely recommend to work in sections of this foundation because it can 
dry down and just become harder to blend out once it's been sitting on your skin for a bit. Yeah, I definitely didn't mix it light enough. Uh -huh. There is still a difference. So that is one thing to keep in mind, as I do like the way that this wears throughout the day, but the shade can be very tricky. So we have a nice solid medium coverage going on right here. I could add a little bit more over here or down here just to cover up some things that are peeking through, but I don't really feel the need to right now. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in with concealer. So this is actually one of the products that kind of sort of has the name written on it, and this is the Lightweight Concealer Stick. I'm pretty sure from the packaging that it's from their Beautifully Bare line, but this is the shade Fair Light. And again, it looks kind of dark, so I really don't know if this is gonna work under my eyes, but since maybe the foundation's a bit dark, it'll look okay. So I'm just gonna apply this. And it's like a twist up kind of concealer stick. I think I'm gonna keep this just under my eyes. I was debating putting it like in the center of my face to even out the foundation, but, but with the stick concealer, I don't really wanna push it because I know uh, for me personally, stick concealers tend to move things around when you apply them. So once it is blended out, it actually looks really nice under my eyes. I am seeing my fine lines, so it's not going to be like your full coverage cover everything concealed. I can also still see like some blue from my bags under here. So again, it's not going to be a super full coverage concealer. But the finish is nice. It looks a bit radiant. So you're not looking too dry under there. I always set my under eyes. So next I'm going to go in with their loose setting powder for under eyes and this is in the shade banana yes yeah I, I hate that they don't label everything come on um so this is the shade right here something tells me it's going to be too dark but they only have three shades in this and one i mean they all looked a little bit dark which is the weird thing so i'm going to just try and set my under eyes with this and see how it goes That doesn't look too bad. That could work. Next, while that is baking, I'm gonna go in with a finishing powder. This is the e.l.f. Prime and Stay Finishing Powder in Translucent Fair Light. This one, they had a decent amount of shades in, but... Mm, I don't like how I'm not really getting too much on my brush from that. So we're gonna set... So this is a decent finishing powder. I can at least get product off and onto my face and it does hold everything in, but it doesn't last a full day like I see some of my other favorite affordable powders going for. But if you can find a shade in here that will work for you, definitely give it a shot. I think this is like one or two dollars, so that's not bad for a compact. I just have other affordable options that I like a little bit better. And as you can see, I'm already like oxidized a bit. Whenever I wear this foundation in real life, I mix it really, really light and then let it kind of sink in and wear throughout the day. And even then I tend to just wear like a high shirt if I'm going to work or if I'm staying at home or running errands, I just tend to wear like a, a scarf or a turtleneck. And I think that's one of the things that stops me from like really raving about this foundation because it does wear really well and looks beautiful on the skin, but the shades are so tricky. Like, it, you shouldn't need, like, 10 steps to get a shade to, like, work for you, right? So next, I'm gonna go over a palette I'm actually pretty excited for, and this is a face palette. So this is the Glow Up Face Palette. It's $7. I picked it up at Target, and this is what you get. You get a couple of bronzer shades, you get a contour shade, you get some blushes, and some highlighters. So you've got just, like, everything all in one spot, and you've got a really nice big mirror in here. This is something I really wanted to try, because I think, like... If you have a good face palette, just put like all of your best powders into one. I think I'm a sucker for a good face palette. So I am gonna use this shade right here as my bronzer. And then I'm gonna use this like lighter ashy shade right here as my contour. They're not really labeled, so I'm just gonna point at them. So 
So for blush, I was a bit torn because I do have one of their individual blushes and this is in the shade Candid Coral and it's just like a nice like muted, muted, muted peach. But then we also have this nice kind of like glittery peach shade in here. So I don't know which, let me swatch them. Huh. This one's looking a little bit darker and I think I want to go for that one. So I'm just going to take this. And like these, this packaging is actually really good. I love like this little packaging because you've got the name on the front. You know, for the most part, they have like one main blush line. So you know it's a blush, you know the shade right here. And then you open it up and you've got a nice little mirror in here. It's not too big. And then because of that flap in the front, when it's closed, you can see what shade you're looking at. So I think this packaging is great. I think they need to work just on their labeling because I, I want to know what product is what when I'm using it. Add a little bit of color, add a little bit of color. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe away the fake. I'm confused, because it almost looks a little too light, right? Like, I feel like over here, I'm looking way too light down here. And also, the powder, like, fell down here on the side of my nose, and I kind of look like a coke head. I'm gonna take some of this shade right here. It's kind of like a deeper beige shade and I'm just gonna put that under my eyes and see if it darkens it up a little bit. Okay, I think that definitely helped. So it looks a little bit more cohesive. So for highlight today, I had a couple of really good options. I have like this kind of like stark white highlight here in the palette. I am leaning more towards that one. I also have their baked highlight in Moonlight Pearls, which is really good. And then I have one of their like original dollar highlights and this is in White Pearl, which is misleading because it's definitely more of like a yellow tone. But I feel like with this look, I kind of want to just try this white one. So I'm going to go in, see how this applies. But it doesn't look too bad. I like the shade. I feel like maybe if my foundation wasn't so off shade-wise, it would look a little bit better. But it's nice. I really do like the shades in this palette, unfortunately. I don't think it'll work for anyone that's darker than my complexion because I can use all of like the contour shades, the highlights, the blush. The blush is very pigmented, so be careful of that. But it's really not a bad deal for $7. So before I go in with setting spray, because I do like to meld these powders down and I am looking a little bit powdery. Before I do that, I want to do eyebrows. So I picked up their, again, this isn't labeled. This is, this is their Beautifully Bare Sheer Tint Brow Gel in the shade Dark. I tried out their clear brow gel from this line and I really liked it, like the formula, but I hate the brush. You see how tiny that is? I have fairly large brows. With how small this is with the clear brow gel, I, it took me like five to 10 minutes to put on enough gel for it to hold. I don't wanna do that every time I put on brow gel. So I was thinking maybe if I got the tinted one that it would make more sense. Cause for the tinted one, you wanna be a little bit more precise. You wanna take your time. You don't want it to get everywhere. So maybe the smaller brush will work. But still, I'm barely getting any product on when I'm doing this. I just wish they had put in like a regular kind of brush. Because, I, I mean, if you have small brows, I guess this would be great for you. But I feel like my brows are fairly average. I know I'm a very hairy person, I'll put it that way. I have a lot of hair on my head. I have to shave my legs every day. I've got a lot of brow hairs. So maybe this is just a me problem but I don't want to have to sit here and spend however long adding enough product to my brows when I have other brow gels where I could go in in like one or two sweeps and be good. <sighs> Okay, so I just dipped in like three times and spent the time doing this brow and I still have some sparse areas right here that I don't know if I want to take the time to try and fill. Hmm. 
I mean, if you're looking for like a super, super natural brow, maybe. Oh no. You see that? I just got a speck right up here because I was trying to. That's me. I was trying to rush the process because I got so annoyed about how long it was taking with that little brush. <sighs> this is definitely something I would not pick up again. So I'm just giving up. I really don't like the way my brows turned out at all. So like I said a bit earlier, this is the point where I like to kind of set my face before I go in with my eyeshadow just because all of my powders are now done. I picked up two sprays from e.l.f. This is the Makeup Mist and Set, and then this one is the e.l.f. Blotting Mist, which I guess you're supposed to use this like throughout the day as a touch-up instead of using a powder. So that kind of intrigued me. So I'm going to go in with both of these. I'm going to try out the Mist and Set first and see if that makes a difference. Ooh. I like that sprayer. That is a nice mister. I just got absolutely soaked. <laughs> so I'm still waiting for that to dry, but already everything looks 10 times better. It definitely doesn't look powdery. If anything, my highlight looks a lot better. Under my eyes looks better. Oh, setting spray, save the day. Okay, so the mister on this one is not as good. I felt like actual like droplets of water hitting my face with this one. And this is also really scented. While as the other one, it didn't have a scent. Oh, it's, it's got that weird same smell as the primer. I don't know, if you're not good at the scent, I would steer clear of this one. But I am actually very impressed with the mist and set one. It has been officially two minutes since I applied both this e.l.f. makeup mist and set to my face along with the e.l.f. matte blotting mist, right? And this is what happened. I've literally done nothing else to my face. I was about to get the eyeshadow out because I was about to prime and do my eyeshadow, but this... What the hell? Like, really? <laughs> okay, so I was like, maybe I used it wrong. No, the mattifying touch-up spray helps absorb excess oils for a mattified complexion in seconds. Directions. Shake before use. I did that off camera so you wouldn't hear this. Then hold the bottle several inches from your face and spray a light layer of mist over your makeup or bare skin with eyes closed. So I followed the directions... I used literally just their products. This is just e.l.f. on my face. Why the heck did this happen? <sighs> you know, if I, if I really... Ugh. I really don't feel like washing this off and then doing the whole thing again. At least I know what product it is. This is immediately going into the trash. I don't care. This... <laughs> Could you imagine if you were actually getting ready? Like, thankfully, this is like a Sunday, and I don't have to go anywhere after this. And I can wash this off and put makeup on and film the next video that I have to film. But what if you were just using e.l.f. and this happened? Yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and cancel this video. <laughs> I'm going to stop it right here. Uh, I was very half and half on the products anyway. Um, so I'll just come out with another video at some point just talking about i think i already did a 4x4 four four for elf but I, i'll have more to say especially since i spent my own money buying all these products to do the full face of elf so so i'll link up that 4x4 four four i did for elf just for the meantime if you guys want to check that out i'm gonna go wash my face because what the actual hell Thanks for watching this train wreck, guys. <laughs> if you like seeing me suffer, hit the thumbs up button. <laughs> I hope the next video goes better. <laughs> Bye.
let's let's zoom in here let's just take a look oh this looks amazing <laughs> 